Hi, today's good person to know is Stephen Wadlington. He's digital and social media director at Checkham and also the president of the Chartered Institute of Public Relations. And his talk asks one question, can a brand ever truly be social? And that got me thinking, of course, they're all social, aren't they? But no, they're not. And they don't do a very good job of it, as you'll see in this video. Stephen gives examples of brands who have done a really poor job of it, tells of, of his personal story and then gives us some takeaways that we really have got to action. Stephen says the internet has changed from mass communication to personal communications because people form networks on different platforms and he likens it to a party. People that we just want to go and speak to and really enjoy their company and want to know more about them. And then we've got people that we just want to avoid like the plague, we just do not want to speak to them. And he says, why is the internet any different? It gives us the same experiences. So from a digital point of view, brands have personalities too. You've got the nice but dim, i.e. the people who try to be relevant but have no affinity to the occasion. You've also got nutters, brands who aren't empathetic and just associate themselves via a hashtag. And Stephen says, you have got to be intrinsically human, people. And three, don't be automated. There is a clear need for when you need to be automated that's when you're gathering research and data but not when you're speaking to people Stephen says telefonica have the, have got the balance right and so watch this video as to why he singles them out so can you really be social on social media well Stephen talks about his wife katie who had breast cancer due to its sensitivity they were very careful as to how they managed their communications this touched a nerve with me because Someone close to me is about to start this process and Peter says it's about focusing on milestones to get you through it. Why are we afraid to talk about stuff like this publicly but we don't mind so much on social media? Peter says Katie's doing well now, she's recuperating and that's just fantastic, wonderful news. I think the point that Stephen's making here is that we've got to be brave. Amazing things happen when we do and to think about how we communicate when we're talking on behalf of our brands. He summarised his talk by telling us that social media is human that we have to be brave and the one thing that stuck with me the most was girls check your boobs guys your balls really if something's not right go to your gp early detection of cancer is so important so if there's one thing that i want you to take away is that you can be human in a non-human setting i mean stephen was telling us about his personal story in a business conference and that just tells you something about the way we're living right now. So I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching. The narrative of the last 20 years of life on the internet is a shift from mass forms of communication to personal forms of communication. People form networks through different forms of social media, such as Facebook, such as Twitter, and they come together and coalesce around topics of interest, around passions. Metaphor of a party is often used to describe this in the way that people in a party will come together. There are people you seek out that, that are interesting, that are fascinating, that you, you want to talk to. Equally, there's the nerd in the corner that's still a, sh still a shift that you make your excuses to and go to the toilet as quickly <coughs> as possible. A different personality type that brands try and adopt to be cool and relevant within party that is social media marketing. I wrote a book last year with a guy called Steve Earl. We talked a lot about this. It's called Brand Bundles if you want to look at how brands completely screw up their reputation by trying to be relevant but could be failing. The first personality type I want to talk about there is the brand of the party that's nice but dim. We all know this. We see this day in, day out. This is the obsession with content marketing calendars. The obsession to be relevant. Brands that have nothing, no affinity at all with sport or the World Cup suddenly start posting things like, it's finals day, what are you doing? Watching football, no shit. You see it all the time, day in, day out, open your Facebook feed right now and you'll get pissed off by this kind of lazy, silly marketing that just is, it lacks complete thought. It's, it's organisations trying to be part, trying to be cool, and they're, they're just not. And because of that, they just look silly. The second personality type, no matter what's going on, they're almost psychopathic in their behaviour, their lack of empathy. Um, where a brand just tries to insert itself in a conversation, hashtag Jack, um, and just is completely irrelevant. You need to be empathetic if you're marketing uh, in the social web. You need to be intrinsically human in the way you communicate. You don't need to do this. 
third characteristic I want to um, shout out is automation, industrialization. The social web is human, it's intrinsically human. It's based on human relationships, relationships that we all have between each other. Now automation and tools have a place very firmly in what we do. Um, from a listening point of view, from a data point of view, from understanding publics and audiences, they're really, really important. But you cannot automate a conversation. There are brands that are doing social media forms of communication incredibly well. There are brands that recognise that social media marketing, content marketing, is a means of engaging audiences, not just as a function of communication, as a marketing but also right the way through the organisation. These are the organisations that are shifting to truly to become social businesses, and O2 is a great example of that. I had an epiphany about a year ago, um, six months ago, um, where I suddenly realised that in this shift to, to uh, industrialised, automated social media marketing, so many brands were, were getting it wrong. And that lesson came to me from this woman. Um, this is a woman called Katie, she's 44, uh, lives up in Northumberland, she's actually my wife. She was diagnosed with breast cancer about a year ago, um, and she's a very private person. I have asked her permission to share this slide with you today. We've been very, very careful about how we manage communication with, through, through this period, just because of the, the sensitivities. Treatment is often worse than the original prognosis. And to get to the stage of recuperation and recovery, you have to go through some really awful treatment. One of those treatments is chemotherapy. So she had surgery, she went through chemotherapy. And when you're on going through, um, going through treatment, you focus very firmly on milestones to get you through because that's a coping mechanism that really, really helps. And cancer is one of the great taboos like depression, like um, miscarriage. We don't talk about it except in social networks, we do. At a very human level, we do. It has a really good ending. Um, I, um, I'll, I'll fast forward almost to the end. I think Katie's in a good place. She's, she's recuperated well. When we are at our absolute glorious, when we're really, really brave in how we communicate, amazing things happen. People coalesce around, uh, around you at a very personal, human level. And I challenge you to think about how you are communicating on behalf of the brands and the organisations that you work for. And I challenge you to, to do it at a more human level. That's an extreme example, but it's a good example. There's a bloke called Maslow who um, developed a hierarchy of the analysis, psychological analysis of our needs as, as human beings. For us as organisational communicators in working with brands and organisations is to root what we do as high as possible the first order human need. The further you can get towards the bottom of that pyramid in the vision and purpose of your organisation, the more relevant you are going to be at a very basic human level to the organisations uh, that, that you work for, to the brands that you work for in communication and these new forms of social media. So, I want to leave you with three takeaways. The first one, social media is intrinsically human. It's a human form of communication. I showed you that through Katie's story. Second thing, be brave in what you do. Challenge the organisations that you work for to be as relevant as possible at an intrinsic human level. This is a really important thing. Uh, a, a personal message, actually. The, the best way of uh, finding a, a cure for cancer, uh, to, for treating cancer, is to diagnose it really, really early. So, women in the audience, once a month, check your boobs. Uh, boys in the audience, check your balls. This excellent organisation called Catholic Field has helped us out a lot.